All right, we'll get started. Good evening and welcome to the July meeting of the Revere Board of Health. My name is Michael Wells, Director of Municipal Inspections. In attendance for tonight's meeting are board members, Chairperson Dr. Nathalie Kong and board member Neza Luwadi. Also in attendance for tonight's meeting are Revere staff, Lauren Buck, Director of Public Health, Marcia Mendez, Administrative Assistant, and Colleen Argenzio, Assistant to the Director. On tonight's agenda, we have representatives from the Northeast Mosquito Control, which is the company that services the city of Revere uh, for mosquito prevention. Lauren or Dr. Kong? Hi, um, and I think we just wanna mention that um, Craig also just signed on, who is yes. also a member. Hi, of our Hi. Um, Board of Health. Um, so yeah, I think you guys, uh, so Kimberly, Barry and Kelsey um, are gonna do a presentation for us. And then if any of us have any questions, hopefully we can um, ask them at the end of the presentation. Um, do you guys want to take it away? Sure. Um, I'd like to introduce myself. Um, my name is Barry Noon. I'm the acting district director of NEMMC. Um, most of you guys know Kim Foss, our entomologist, and then Kelsey Liakos, our um, order of health liaison. Um, I don't know too many people. I do know uh, Colleen through many, many, many emails, <laughs> um, but it's nice to see some faces. And um, I think we're just gonna get right into it and Kim's gonna um, do a little slideshow for us. And then we can take any questions after. And I think, Marsha, are you gonna start that? All right, so we can just start the slideshow and think. Do you guys see the, the, the... Yeah, I, I see it. I'm, yeah, we just need to start. Just go to slideshow and then hit start, I think. It's up at the top, Marsha. Um, it's kind of top middle. Yeah, right next to animations, just hit slideshow. Oh, sorry, one second. That's okay. Why it doesn't want to start? Um, your mouse is on it right now. It says start slideshow right there, right where your um, the arrow is. Where it was before? Right in the middle. Right here, right? The thing is, the zoom thing is right on top, so I can't. Oh, um, yeah, because I can't click. I can see it. Um, if someone want to send it to me, I can just do it. Yeah, can I send it to you, Dr. Paul? Right, yep. I have my email right, open right here, so just let me know when. Oh, I think now I got it. Can you guys see it? I don't see it. Does anyone else see it? No, I still I see it. Yeah, it didn't change in my screen. Just send it to me. I can. I can just. Um, I'll do it. Um, you just have to. I think you just have to make me. Um, yeah, cool. Host so that I can share my screen. That's all. And then just send me the the um, PowerPoint. Or if can't really right now. Yeah, it's Thank you. 
And we also have Caitlin King that joined us too. She's our wetlands projects coordinator. Yep, hi everyone. Did you get it, Dr. Kong? Um, let me see. Maybe I need to refresh. I don't see it yet in my, in, in my inbox. I don't see it. I don't see it yet. Did you... um? Archie, can you um, let me know what email you, or maybe just type in the message what email you sent it to? Is there just like a one thing I can do? Because I can start it from here if I have to. Oh, yeah. Um, I guess, Marsha, you can also make um, Kimberly the co-host and she can. I did. Yeah, well, I believe she is a co-host already. Oh, yeah. If you hit share screen, Kimberly, we can, you can share um, whatever screen your PowerPoint is on and you can get that started from your... Uh, computer. Okay, so fair screen. You see it at the bottom, it says mute, stop video, security. Oh, yeah. why it's downloading. Okay, it's downloading, it's coming. Oh, I actually have it too. Hold on, I just got it. Okay. Can everybody see it? Yep. Right. Yep. Yep. <clears throat> okay. Sorry about that. <laughs> so we've already introduced some of our our um, member our uh, my coworkers. We have everyone here that's in attendance. So I just want to make a brief statement. As uh, I don't know if you have heard of the uh, PFAST issues. Um, that's been going around as far as containers, probable pesticide, other stuff like that. We, uh, this winter, we went through a lot of testing criteria for our products uh, to see if we had PFAS in our, uh, any of our pesticide products. And um, I'll let, Barry, did you want to discuss more about it? Or you just want me to kind of keep going on that? <laughs> um, well, yeah, we basically um, had all our products tested, anything that, um, at a level that was higher than the acceptable level we had um sent back to the manufacturer and a uh, new product was sent to us that was then again tested by the epa so everything that we use in the district has been um, approved by the epa the srb um going forward so that's a that's a worry that um <clears throat> excuse me revere doesn't have to uh concern itself with because everything we do use um, 
is PFAS free as of now. Okay. I'm going to kind of get back to some uh, educational stuff really quick and kind of skim over this, but the way the district, we're a state agency and we're governed by uh, the Department of Agriculture Resources, the SRB, which is the State Reclamation Board. It's also an entity of the um, department, well, it's the Department of Ag and uh, Pesticide Board. And so it's kind of all combined, but we work under the state umbrella. And um, most of the stuff that we do, well, everything we do is integrated pest management. So basically we, we look at, we don't just go and treat or spray. We do mosquito surveillance. We do um, biological controls, which also include bacterium, uh, as well as our regular uh, larvicides and adulticides. We also do physical controls, such as property maintenance. We handle resident requests, and I'll go into that in some future slides. Um, we do tire recycling programs. Revere at this point doesn't doesn't do that right now, but you know, if we want to discuss that at a later time, we can do a hazardous waste day, or you know, if we have a couple tires here and there, we can pick them up for people and dispose of them. Um, we also do a lot of education and outreach. We have a, a, a big website that we constantly modify to make it easier for people. And Kelsey, who's our Board of Health liaison, will go over some of the um, new things that we've added for the Board of Health, which is a municipal toolbox for them to use during virus events or other things they want for handouts and flyers. Basically, we did this, we have, we're busy year round. So, you know, we have different schedules of events that happen during the course of the year, all the way from spring freshwater larviciding to then we move on to different kinds because there's 52 different mosquitoes in Massachusetts. And each one of those mosquitoes has different habitats, times of year, uh, virus, um, you know, how they interact with viruses, when they bite people, where they breed. It's, it's kind of widespread. So we do different catch we do different treatments of larvicides based on what the mosquito is so we'll do salt marsh treatments catch basin treatments um we'll do resident requests for swimming pools and things like that tires as well because tires breed mosquitoes puddles ponds you know anything that may breed or any problem that a resident may have or a board of health agent may have can contact us and we'll go do a service request and see if it needs to be treated for mosquitoes we do ditch maintenance, manual mechanized. Caitlin will go over that later. And it has to have a mosquito component, but we do a lot of wetland projects, which includes mechanized and manual ditch maintenance. And of course, as you know, we do our Delta siding spray requests and we'll do those spray requests for also for virus control. And then of course, the biggest thing is the surveillance. <laughs> so we start that, we've started that already. It's been running for almost four weeks. And uh, that usually ends the first week of October but it can run on depending on how much virus we have or, or how um, the lab wants us to react or if the weather stays warmer past October 1st, because we do have uh, weather variants on our spraying where we have to stop during cold weather and stuff like that or rainy events because we had to cancel last Thursday's spray because it was considerably cooler and really rainy. So we couldn't do that. So the arborvirus surveillance program, like I said, started already. Um, we started sending pools to the lab on June 1st. We'll test, right now we're only testing, basically they call it a phase one. So we're only testing species that are directly involved with the West Nile and Tripoli. So the primary vectors. And what that means is those are the species that bite the birds. The birds carry the virus. The mosquitoes bite the birds, get the virus, and then can transmit it to other birds. Once there's a high bird population that has West Nile or Eastern equine, then later in the season, other mosquitoes that bite birds and humans will feed on those birds and then go feed on people. So there's a whole bunch of different mosquitoes that I send at different times for different types of things. One is the early, the early warning is what we're doing right now. We're sending all these Culex, which are bird biters for West Nile. We send those now and we see if we get a hit back for West Nile virus, and then we start doing some secondary intervention. Once we get those positives, we call the boards of health right away. Whoever the contact is for the board of health, we contact them, and then we go through a plan on what we're going to do within the next couple days for treatment to minimize the risk of West Nile virus to humans. 
we basically have 32 communities that are participating in our state program. Um, the traps, the map on the top, you'll see where we have all our trap locations. We can't divulge those trap locations because some, some of them are in at people's homes. So we, we try to keep them fairly confidential. Um, you know, if a board of health member wants to know exactly where it is, we can let them know. But as far as the public goes, we tend not to let them know just so that we keep it fairly private. We use different kinds of traps, mostly for Revere, we use the CO2 light trap, which catches mosquitoes that can bite people. And we use the Gravid trap, which catches mosquitoes that primarily feed on birds. We don't use resting boxes for Tripoli surveillance in Revere because based on the habitat, Revere doesn't have the type of habitat for Tripoli. It doesn't mean it can't pop up in a mosquito here and there, but for Revere, they don't really have that kind of habitat. So we focus more heavily on the West Nile virus. And we are putting out over traps in Revere, which is for an invasive species. Now, if we get a first positive West Nile virus in Revere, we set up supplementals. The supplemental traps are movable. They're not the historic planted traps that are plugged in, but these can be moved around town. So we can focus them on high risk areas such as playgrounds, schools, um, where there might be a habitat where these things are breeding so we can treat it better or larvicide or do truck based spraying or block spray around that area. So those come in very handy. And then we send those additional mosquitoes into the lab to see how dense the West Nile virus is in the area, or if it's outside that main area and we have to treat the whole city. One of our biggest things that we do as well as surveillance is our larval surveillance. So we check pretty much anything that has any standing water for seven to 10 days and we check for larvae. And if we find an adequate amount of larvae, we treat. We normally treat anything that's attached to groundwater supply with a bacterium. So it's the BTI. Anything that's in containers or drain water, um, not attached to open regular uh, like wetland types and stuff. We may use a methoprene base or we may use like a um, a film. It's a mechanical, so it's like an oil. So we use like Coco Bear or those types of products. But mainly for anything that drains into rivers, lakes, streams, ponds, uh, the salt marsh, we'll use bacterium. So those are kind of pictures of everywhere where you might be able to find mosquito larvae. So again, when we're larviciding, we do fresh and salt water wetlands. We'll also do retention ponds, detentions, ditches, containers, abandoned properties, especially, you know, swimming pools, because one swimming pool can breed enough mosquitoes to, to literally, you know, or potentially create a whole chain of West Nile virus between birds feeding on the tarp or drinking water or bird baths. So the close proximity of the birds and the mosquitoes are right there. So you can cause a little cluster a virus just based on a vacant swimming pool um, or a pile of tires or a lot of, you know, debris that might be collecting water. Place any place, especially in the summer when it, when it's hot and dry, the birds and the mosquitoes kind of go together. They they always find the same water holes. We also do a regional aerial salt marsh larviciding program, which is pretty much Ipswich to the New Hampshire border. It's about 3,500 acres, and the bottom dipper you'll see the amount of larvae that will pull out of a salt marsh. And we'll use helicopters up in that area. Down in your area, we use our guys. <laughs> if you see them on top of that little buggy that we have. So they'll drive around the marshes. So they'll ride out on Rumney Marsh, um, you know, Belle Isle, any of those marshes. And this year, actually, we put out a record amount of bacterium to treat those marshes. And the bacterium lasts about three to four flood tides. So we can go treat and do touch-ups, but the, the big, big treatments like the ones we do, we only do every so certain amount of months, almost about the same as what we do with the helicopter. Another big thing that we do in Revere is the catch basin larvicide program. So this is really particularly important for West Nile virus. Most of the mosquitoes that we get that transmit West Nile live in those catch basins. So the catch basins are designed to collect stormwater they never dry out completely. About halfway through, halfway down, there's a pipe. 
So there's an inlet and outlet that transfers the water to other areas. But there's a sump at the bottom, and that sump either collects uh, groundwater or the remnants of stormwater. So that sits in that, and that could be anywhere from one foot to three feet deep. And that just sits there and just gets stagnant. And depending on what debris falls in the basins, whether it's leaves, grass clippings, anything else that people put in there, it creates this perfect environment for the West Nile virus mosquito, these Culex mosquitoes. So it's, it's imperative that we treat these basins on time every year prior to the season for West Nile because it's more of a preventative that if we can keep those mosquito populations down, we may be able to reduce the overall West Nile in the bird population. So we focus uh, very heavily on doing these catch basins on a timely basis. And again, it, usually we can get some of the municipalities to clean them ahead of time. We do realize that Revere takes quite a while to clean and sometimes they don't get all their basins done in one year. So we are in con uh, contact with the DPW and we set up schedules with them and we work on certain portions of the town, either with, back, either with a bacterial larvicide or with a methoprene larvicide and try to treat everything so that they don't, it doesn't get sucked up by the vac truck as it goes by. So you know, sometimes we have to go back and do a retreat, which is fine. And we do adulticiding and barrier treatments. So mostly the adulticiding is, is uh, for a lot of our towns, it's only by Board of Health for virus only. Revere and I think we have about 11 towns now that allow their residents to call in to do a request for mosquitoes. And we do that once a week. And uh, the, we also take Board of Health um, requests as well. So Colleen usually sends us an email and we have a certain amount of streets and schools and stuff and we'll do a regular that and then we lump it into what the residents request. And sometimes we'll do extra because we may have a really bad salt marsh mosquito problem, which we've seen over the past couple of years. <clears throat> Due to climate change, we're seeing higher tides, um, more frequent tides, you know, the rain events are sketchy. So everything kind of just impacts and, and we're, we're seeing some changes on the salt marshes that we haven't seen in a long time. So we're also fighting off these salt marsh mosquitoes as well. And even if we've treated areas, these mosquitoes can fly on wind currents or be carried, you know, 25 to 30 miles. So even if we have no breeding going on in certain towns, you can still get an influx of salt marsh mosquitoes that get blown in from wherever the wind is is blowing from that area. Uh, Winthrop, for example, we go down there, they don't even have one mosquito larvae I can find anywhere, but they get blown in from another, from, you know, near the airport area, those marshes there. So when those breed, those mosquitoes can fly in and they can affect Revere, Saugus, Lynn, that whole area. So we see that quite frequently. They're also day biters. <clears throat> so we, when we spray, we spray a half hour after sunset. So it makes it a little difficult to control these mosquitoes because they settle down. They kind of bunker down in tall grasses for the night. So they're not up and flying. Um, when I, you know, the Adelta side that we use, it does like a, um, it has a swath on each side of the truck. It's meant to be lofted and stay in the air for a very short period of time and come in contact with mosquitoes that are in the air flying. If mosquitoes aren't in the air flying, it really doesn't affect them. You know, we try to back up into areas that have tall grasses and things and do a little bit more so that it can kind of go through the grasses and maybe get some of them. But the salt marsh mosquitoes are tough. They're, they're basically on the opposite schedule as our spray trucks. <laughs> and our products, we can't spray during the day because our product labeling um, is, is protection for bees and flowers and things like that. So we have to wait till a half hour after sunset. But our products do have a quick knockdown. Uh, we do use those same products for any disease or virus that's in the town. We'll do a block area. It works very well on the human, the mammal biters that, um, that can transmit, which do bite during the nighttime. So we do that spray. <clears throat> we also have a barrier treatment that can be used prior to any virus. And the new product that we have is suspend polyzone. We can spray that on buildings that have vegetative surroundings. So if it's a building that has no vegetation around it, it's very hard to use a barrier treatment. But if we have a school that has a tree line or even a, a good sized brick wall or, or something that we can spray, 
that barrier treatment can last up to 90 days, which may prevent West Nile or Triple E getting into that school area if we're busy or if it's just a hectic year, it's preventative. And anybody can reach out to Barry and he can explain that to you. And this is our ULV truck based. And we're using Zenovex E4 now, which has no, um, it's a pyrethroid derivative, which is basically marigolds or pyre, uh, you, they pull pyrethroids from marigolds and then they uh, synthesize it into um, different kinds of pyrethroids based or, you know, Delta Methrin, um, Resmethrin, all those other products are based off that. So there's no synergist in this one that we use. We used to use Duet, um, but we decided to go with the no PBOs which are the synergists and cause they can have negative effects on bees and other pollinators. So we decided to go with Zenovex, which is more environmentally friendly. Um, there is, it's a quick but limited knockdown. It's about 15 minutes. There is no residual. That's the 300 foot swath um, total. And again, we apply it a half hour after sunset. And I'm gonna let Kelsey go through the school IPM Portion. Hi, thanks, Kim. So um, as Kim said earlier, I'm Kelsey, the uh, Board of Health Liaison. So I handle a lot of things at the website, anything, you know, anything I can do to help the Board of Health. Um, and School IPM is also part of that. So each school, if they, they need an IPM plan, an indoor and an outdoor plan, we're focused on the outdoor plan for mosquito control. Um, oops. This means that, sorry, I'm the slideshow got a little funny on me. Uh, um, me. Hold on. This means that if a board of health requests to have a school either adult decided or barrier treated, like Kim was just talking about, it needs to have an update up to date IPM plan with all of our up to date products on it. So I've already helped a few IPM coordinators um, have reached out to me to help update their plans. I'm happy to do that for anyone that ever has any questions. It's always better to get ahead of that. Um, and if any of the Board of Health are interested, I can, I think most of the schools have, mm, I'm actually not entirely sure with Revere, but if anyone has any questions on that, I'd be happy to look up the schools in Revere and kind of go over that and take some next steps if there's any interest in spraying any of the schools this summer of barrier treatment. I think that's all I'm going to say for now, Kim, unless there's any okay. questions. No, nope. Perfect. And this is where Caitlin King comes in, our wetlands project coordinator. She can go over a little bit of this and just do a brief explanation of um, what we can do that's non-pesticide related for mosquito control. Okay, so hi everyone. Um, I'm the wetlands coordinator as Kim explained. And um, so a couple of the things that we do um, are hand ditch maintenance projects and mechanized uh, ditch maintenance. So um, <clears throat> the hand ditch maintenance projects we do in the fall um, and throughout the winter, and they are whatever our crew can move by hand, or if an impediment in a stream was a potential for um, blocking the water and creating mosquito breeding, mosquito breeding habitat, um, that's something that we could remove the obstruction by hand. Um, that's hand ditch maintenance. So um, mechanized ditch maintenance is more something that we can, we need a larger machine for, like our excavator. So um, an example of this would be something like on the salt marsh, if um, there's a ditch that was eroded and is now just kind of a mosquito breeding pan, something like that. Um, so uh, that's the hand ditch maintenance, that's the mechanized ditch maintenance. <clears throat> and then also um, we do the mowing. That's something that you guys are aware of in Revere. Um, we have multiple locations. So um, if there's any additional locations uh, that potentially there's Phragmites that's growing over uh, potential mosquito breeding habitats, that's something that we would want to gain access to by mowing. Um, 
And then also just to cover um, one other thing that we do is tire recycling programs. So Kim explained that um, Revere does not currently participate um, in our tire recycling program, like as far as the household hazardous waste events. And um, if you guys are interested in participating in that, I ask that you reach out to me um, because I have uh, reached out to a couple other towns that um, are interested and will be bringing our truck, one of our bigger trucks, to their household hazardous waste event. Or we can create a standalone event for residents to drop off tires um, and that's just an option for people to safely and um, at no extra charge to get rid of the spare tires that may be collecting water on their property and therefore creating a mosquito breeding habitat. So, um, yeah, so if anybody is um, interested and um, the revered DPW director, are they on the call right now? Because um, so. we can get, I can get into contact with them um, in the future. I have tried in the past um, to get in contact with all the DPW directors, but it's been a tricky year. Um, so yeah, if uh, you guys have any interest in anything that I've mentioned, um, please reach out to me. And that's all I have to say about that. Thank, Thank you, Caitlin. Thank you. Kate, if you want to send that information to me on the recycle going program, I can forward it for you. Hi, Kate. Sure. Um, Paula Genzio, the superintendent of DPW, is here. Okay, excellent. Hi, Paula. Kate. Hi there. I'll, I'll reach out to you after the meeting via email, um, if that's all right, and we can touch base about any potential projects that you guys would like to get involved in okay. or learn more about. That sounds great. I'd love to hear about it. Awesome. Okay. Thank you, Caitlin. Thank you, Kim. We also have a really good website. This, this is what I was mentioning earlier. So we've had to redesign this several times. One, because we had a triple E year, which uh, hit us pretty hard. So we needed to have a lot of services available for the boards of health, for outreach, for documentation, for flyers, for media, press releases. And this covers both West Nile and Eastern equine encephalitis. So uh, Kelsey in the spring usually emails out the login for the municipal toolbox, which is special, and she does that for the boards of health. So that's specially designed to be able to access for the boards of health to get um, handouts, flyers, educational materials, um, posters, uh, basically rough draft press releases, media releases, all kinds of things. So if if um, you guys haven't received that, just reach out to us again and we can resend that and maybe walk you through it if you want to, if that's something that interests you. Um, but we also have services here for our residents. So the school IPM program is on here and residents can choose their own school and see what their school allows for, for products. Um, the towns, the cities can also do that too. We also have an online resource for the residents to be able to do their spray requests, which can be done also through the boards of health. We don't mind getting an email because it's easier sometimes to just list the 20 or 30 sites that you need to have done. But if it's just like a pool that you want us to have to go look at and you just you don't want to have to send an email, you can log in, you can go and you can request us to go look at a pool or but this is the site usually the residents use to do their spray requests. We also have labels pesticide use labels. We have all our educational materials, what our traps look like. Pretty much anything about anything about mosquitoes is on this website. And we we will we still change it here and there because sometimes we have to have people look at it and say, you know, can you change how this looks or can you put this here? It's easier. Sometimes we like to have input on how our website looks so that we can make it easier for people to use it m more frequently. So if you have any, um, if somebody ever wants to go through it and say, hey, I'd like to have this on here, we can try to do that for you. So this is just kind of a quick update of what we've done in Revere so far this year. Um, the other thing I've done is Revere gets a best management practice plan at the beginning of every year, which includes their finance, the, the financial part of it. 
It also has a summary of last year's activity. And what we did differently is we started putting basically a, a sheet of, you know, the activities we completed so that every municipality knows what we're doing at every moment in their town and what we've done for them. It's sort of just a record. It's almost like a, um, a billable type of thing, but it seems to be, it seems to have helped a lot with showing the towns what we do for them. Um, so that kind of helped. And it shows where we've larvicided, when we larvicided, when we did sprays, how many sprays we've had, if we did any tires at all, uh, what the results were for from the testing, when we sent the pools, the mosquito pools in, et cetera, et cetera. So, so far this year, um, again, mosquito surveillance start, started on May 17th, but we didn't start sending pools until June 14th. We do early surveillance so that we can see with the, any trending activity in mosquito populations prior to the virus season. We did 18 site inspections for the spring and early summer larviciding. And we did catch basin larviciding on six, we completed it on 626. So we did 3,102 basins. We did treat that with Metalarv and Metalarv is the methoprene based product, but that one will last a lot longer than the standard Altocid that we usually use. But the schools based on their IPM, they didn't have a chance to add the Metalarv yet, which that's where Kelsey comes in with the school IPM. And so we used Alto sit at the schools. We had no residential pesticide exclusions that were filed in Revere this year so far. And all that means is that some residents can be added to the no spray list where in a block of area, if a resident asks to be not, not to be sprayed, we have to honor that within 14 days of them sending in the request, but Revere doesn't have any. Okay. We've had 142 residential and 66 board of health requested adult size that were completed. The only ones that weren't were the ones that we had to cancel on Thursday of last week due to weather. We've had one resident request for property inspection. We'd like to see a little more, you know, if people have issues or problems or concerns or questions, they can easily call us. They can go to our website. They can have us check that puddle of water in front of their house or if they're wet, their backyard is wet. You know, we check the salt marshes all the time. So some of the residents that request looking at the salt marsh, we, we usually do that every week anyway. So we may not physically drop a door knocker off at the resident's door, but they need to know that we have looked at it and we have looked at that salt marsh. What we're looking for is those abandoned pools, the wet lawns, the, the, the pothole in the, in, the, in the road that keeps filling up with water, uh, ditches, anything that they think that is questionable, we'll come look at. And then when we do that, we'll leave a door knocker saying that we've been there. So far, we've sent one mosquito pool to the lab and it was negative so far. And we've put down about a thousand pounds of four star CRG, which is that BTI on the salt marsh habitat. And again, this is just the start of the season. So we keep keep at it every week and we're down there quite frequently. So do we have any questions at all about anything? Doesn't matter how small the question is or how big it is. <laughs> Hi, this is this is Lauren. This was a great presentation. Thank you so much for doing this. Um, Thanks. Several of us are pretty new to these positions on the call, so it's great to kind of get a, a sense of what's been going on. And I know Colleen is kind of the, the go-to resource for all of us, which is great. Um, but this has been um, really interesting to um, just get a sense of what what goes on. You know every every month and every summer so we can hopefully direct residents in the right way if they come across um, our plates. Um, I have a quick question for you in terms of, um, you quickly mentioned it, but I was wondering if you could potentially talk a little bit more about any changes in patterns you've been seeing because of climate change and potentially what you're, what you could see in the future happening in terms of revere for mosquitoes and all that kind of stuff, just, you know, maybe touch a little bit more about the changes that you've been seeing because of climate change. I mean, there, there, I, I can't make predictions, but the, the two biggest things is one is the heat and the dryness. I, I realize we're getting thunderstorms and they come frequently and sporadically, but the heat itself uh, dries up water very fast. The water doesn't stay long. So a lot of the standing water that we get is in containers and catch basins. And that it, every time we get those, those years that reoccur, West Nile virus goes up. So West Nile virus is an urban mosquito virus that on dry years affects us the most. So hot, dry years. 
And what that what I said before is all the water, any water collects in containers and the birds and the mosquitoes are in the same container. <laughs> pretty much. They're drinking and then the mosquitoes are there. So you have a, a high propensity towards West Nile virus on those years. Whereas, I'll mention it just to kind of clarify, but triple E, Eastern equine encephalitis, is more of a rural thing in red maple swamps and those birds that are roosting and nesting in the spring in those swamps, rearing their young. And that's kind of a wet year. So we get wet years or the previous year was wet. We get the, the triple E. On these hot years, we'll get the West Nile. So that could potentially increase or become more more sporadic, uh, sorry, more frequent to have those events. So we're preparing for that. Um, that's why we do the catch basins earlier. We do, uh, you know, we're trying to get on the resident requests in the pools and everything else. And, and we're already treating standing water and, you know, parking lots, large parking lots in Revere. So those 18 sites, those are con consistent sites that we know breed. They're treated all the time. And then in the summer, I go back or our crew goes back. And we know where rainwater collects and those get treated, you know, like the parking lot of Wonderland. That's one of the big, you know, that one right there gets larvicided every year just so that we, because it's birds and mosquitoes. So, because if you drive by, you'll see all the birds sitting around that water, you know, so we, we treat those areas. So we have areas that we do. The salt marsh is, is kind of a tricky situation. Um, we're seeing an increase of tides. We're seeing a height increase of tides. We're seeing high tides that are now impacting houses, you know, up here, down there. So there will be a shift of species of mosquitoes from that. There's a line between the low marsh and the high marsh. The mosquitoes, the salt marsh mosquitoes like the high marsh. But as that changes, we may have a couple years or even five years of not a lot of salt marsh mosquitoes until they resettle into the new area that this new salt marsh is flooding into. So we're going to have these transitions that it's it's hard to tell what's going to happen, but I've talked with Barry about it, about predicting species and what we're going to see. But I, I think it's just going to continually have, we're going to have salt marsh mosquito problems more and more as we go forward. And, um, and to add on that, Kim, um, historically, when we would do an aerial larva siding or even... Um, granular with backpacks like we do in Revere. Um, it was always the highest tide of the month. Right after that, we would do the helicopter spray because we would find um, the most amount of larva in the most continuous um, dip locations that we're, we're um, monitoring all summer. And what started to change a few years ago is, you know, you'd get like a couple days with a, a, an 11.5 tide or something like that. And now we're getting almost two weeks of really, really high tides. So it's, we've had to change the way we execute an aerial application. And what's happened is we wait for that first big tide to come, even though there might be a little bit bigger one after it. Um, the problem is we try to hit it early because if you wait, um, these high, high tides are pushing the larva around. So your concentrations, you're, you're losing. Um, and then you, if we don't have the proper numbers um, in the right stage of larva, then it makes executing um, the aerial application harder and harder. So it's really coming down to knowing the marshes um, and, and, and adapting to what's coming because there is a lot more water than we've ever had before. You know, and that's why we're using different products that last longer too. So they might, we, we call them like reflood products. So they may last three or four refloods. But again, the higher the tides, if we treat the marsh, even preventatively, knowing there's going to be larvae there on the next high tide, if we get a super tide, it just carries the product right back out to sea. So, you know, that's kind of, so it's been tricky to try to, you know, get it right. And, and, even if we go and treat it and there's no larvae, you guys could get a rainstorm and have a half an inch of water on that marsh. And that triggers the hatch of the, of the salt marsh mosquitoes because any water that, that's already saline. So the minute it fills up with fresh water, the salt in the soil makes that water saline. So we can have another hatch of mosquitoes in between tides. So it's, it's getting to the point where we're consistently having mosquitoes all the time and we're constantly putting product out all the time even when we're using these, these long-term products, I mean, there's been times when we've seen some of the flood tides basically touch 
railroad tracks, <laughs> you know, come up high enough. So, yeah, I, I think it's going to be a little bit of a, a tricky situation for the next couple of years just to see what happens. And, and of course, with the salt marsh mosquitoes, people have been home due to COVID. So they're noticing the salt marsh mosquitoes during the daytime more. So that kind of add that to it. Most people go to work. Um, they're not home during the day. Now people were home all year last year and they were really noticing when they may not have noticed it before because we'll do a spray on Thursday. They may be home on the weekend. It may not be that bad. But now they're home every day of the week and they can't go to their car because they're getting eaten alive. You know, and, and they didn't really see that before. So now people are noticing that and, and that's, you know, we have to add that into the mix too. So. I have a kind of, I guess it could be a silly question. Um, is there anything um, like any, any, any educational materials that we should be putting out to our residents about this? Um, at least how to like protect themselves from mosquitoes or mosquito borne illnesses. Obviously, you know, see something, say something. It sounds like that there's a website they can go to to request for any sort of inspection or you know spraying or, or whatnot but are there other proactive things that we can do as individuals um to you know help to reduce stagnant water in our property or to you know like if we're going to be out gathering you know around dusk like that's when mosquitoes come out should we do some education around that do you recommend that is it effective uh, you could put a link to of our website onto your city page you know like maybe do something off to the side for have your webmaster put something in and maybe link to ours and then you could put a couple notations say you know how to reduce mosquitoes how to prevent this how you know and just do and then they can just click on our site and, and go forward from there we also have some pamphlets, Kelsey, I think we have pamphlets that we still can give to them to maybe post in some of their public places if they want at like town hall or. Yeah, that's what I was just going to jump in and say, um, if you'd like, I can email you plenty. We have a lot of outreach supplies and like access to it. The state also has a really thorough website where you can either print your own or order your own. Um, so if we could just exchange emails, I can get you some of that information because more outreach, the better. Yeah, I think I'm gonna. Um, I guess I'll put my. Or were you on the? You know, I, I can put mine in, Dr. Kong. Um, yeah, and I, I can send it to the email chain that we're all kind of all in with the invite to this. Um, that okay. would be great. Okay, that works. I was gonna say actually, um, Kelsey, maybe you and I can put our email addresses in the chat. Um, yeah, that's fine with me. Oh, yeah, I just I just pulled up the their website, Lauren, and it has like all this. It's like a great FAQ page, so that'll be useful. Yeah, that's great. And yeah, I know you there's the, the municipal toolbox. Um, I'm wondering if I'm sure Colleen probably has a login, but is there any way for us to get um, another login for us to be able to for me to be able to access it? Yeah, so it's actually just one login and password that all the board of health members or any municipal um, workers can access and use. So again, in the email chain, um, I haven't, we haven't been sharing it with the public just because there's sometimes more, um, mm -hmm. you know, prevalent virus information that's really like Board of Health eyes um, only kind of thing. But yeah, so I can share that in the email chain also. Okay, great. Yeah, and, and sorry, the, the PowerPoint's very brief, but each subject, each we could get into de in depth, really, really in depth in some of this stuff, but I want you to skim the surface. So any email from anyone, if you come up with a question, please don't hesitate to email any of us. Um, you know, we'll answer it right away. We're pretty quick in getting back with emails. I mean, literally within an hour, we can, you know, we can get back with, with the emails. So um it's just we do so much that it's really hard to to it, we would be here for hours if we <laughs> you know any other questions Seeing none, I'd like to thank the team from Northeast Mosquito for attending our meeting tonight uh, very very good information out there and we appreciate that. I know Colleen's in touch with you guys all the time and you guys are very responsive um, and 
I know she uh, gives you a list every week of areas to cover, and those are always done. So we appreciate your efforts in controlling the mosquito population in Revere. Thank you for having us, and it was really nice to do this for you. It's It's been a long time coming, but it was something good to do that we should have done a, a while back, but this is good. So, <laughs> Thank you so much. This is great. Yeah, anytime you want us back to do this, just let us know. We'll do it anytime. Thank you. Yeah, Barry, no, thank Kimberly. You. Yeah, thank, thank you. Kelsey and Kate, I want to thank you. Um, you've always been amazing, very informative education. Um, I've learned so much about mosquitoes. When people ask me, I just keep going on and on about what you've taught me. <laughs> thank you. So thank, thank you. you. Thanks. All right. So have a good night, everybody. All right. Thank you. Thank Take you. Care, thank you. What, if I just stop share, is that what it? Yeah, yep. Yeah. Um.